scarlet and gray, maize and blue. Every November, the air cools and the leaves fall and the colors mix on a furious palette for an annual prize. It's a game of legends and legacies, history and hostility. Bow, Woody, Archie, Charles, the big house, the horseshoe, dot the eye, cue the victors. It's not just game time, it's time for the game. It is indeed time. Fans of these two schools wait all year for the next installment of the rivalry, which dates back to the late 1800s. Michigan has the upper hand, largely through early dominance. Ohio State's won the last five and seven of the last eight. And down on the field, let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Sean, in all that history, it's just the second time that a player has played for both sides in this rivalry. Today, Justin Bourne, a guard for Ohio State, will suit up in the garlic and scarlet and gray, but he was a player for Michigan for two years. Now, in the pregame, guys, as you can imagine, it was pretty emotional when he ran out on the field. Fans were yelling all kinds of things like traitor, very rude, awful things. But he kept his focus. He was calm and intense. But at the end of that warm-up period, he gathered his offensive linemen together, and he got after it. You can see how much he wants to win this game. On the other side, guys who used to go up against him every day in practice, defensive lineman Brandon Graham says, he better watch out. I know his tendencies. I've got a good scouting report on him, and I know he gets easily frustrated. I'm going to be talking to him all day to get him out of his game. And just before the kickoff here, I heard Brandon Graham say, things are about to get nasty in here. These boys better be ready. <laughs> Yeah, when well, we spoke with Brandon Graham yesterday, he also pointed out that, in his opinion, Bourne has small arms. Oh, yeah, he's got the short arms, and that's, that is a, a, a rush man's dream. Any offensive lineman who has the short arms, you can get to his shoulders before he can get to you, you're in good shape. Ohio State wearing those throwback uniforms, tribute to the 1954 team, which won a national championship under Woody Hayes, beat Southern California that year in the Rose Bowl. They've taken some aspects of that 1954 uniform, and as you can see, they also have a modern feel as well. Jim Tressel said he'd be sticking with the government issue, as he called it, the sweater, vest, and jacket that's worked well for him over the years. Seven and one against Michigan. That'll solve a lot of other problems that might pop up. Coach Tressel hasn't had many. Five straight Big Ten titles. The man who could use a big win in this rivalry game is Rich Rodriguez on the hot seat here in his second year. Three and nine last season. Worst record in school history. They didn't go to a bowl game for the first time in 33 years. When they started 4 and 0 this year, they thought they were on their way. But they've lost six of their last seven, including six straight Big Ten losses for the first time in 50 years. Ohio State won the toss and receives. Brian Wright kicked off for Michigan. And the 106th meeting is underway. Ray Small pulled down as he crossed the 25-yard line. Tackled by Troy Wolfo, the starting defensive back for Michigan. Terrell Pryor is the starting quarterback for Ohio State, completing 56% of his passes. But most importantly, his last three games have been mistake-free, no turnovers. The team has played turnover-free football in the last two. He is leading Ohio State in rushing and passing. The last man to do that over an entire season was Don Clark back in 1956, and he threw it only seven times all year. After the play fake, prior to Dane Sansenbacher, and a first down, 12 yards on the first play from scrimmage. And last week in that win over Iowa in overtime to clinch the Big Ten, prior threw it only 17 times, but completed 14 of them. Yeah, and the majority of them really came in the beginning of the game, and then they kind of they kind of took control of that game, only to get it tight at the end. But when this offense is humming. They're running the football, and Terrell Pryor is making very good decisions. And that's the key for this offense, for him to make good decisions with the passing game. 
and not turn it over in their last loss the upset against Purdue he turned it over four times they had five as a team Brandon Sane dragged down to the line of scrimmage Jordan Kovacs up from his safety spot and you know Ohio State they know they're a running football team Michigan knows the same thing and so what they're going to do is this going to be a little bit of a chess game today for the Michigan Wolverines, they'll be toying with the numbers at the line of scrimmage to try to give themselves an advantage number-wise to take away the running game where they've struggled. Greg Robinson in his first year as the defensive coordinator here. His unit's given up 400 yards per game, 89th in the country. Devere Posey. The catch and another first down out to the 49-yard line. Kevin Leach. Ordinarily a backup linebacker on the field early made the tackle with help from J.T. Floyd who's a new starter at cornerback. You can see they had an eight man front and then they're playing a zone. The Floyd who you just talked about got the depth the backer has to come underneath that to take that void away. The post just sat right down in the hole. 11 yard completion to their leading receiver Posey's 48th grab of the year. Just shy of midfield back to the run. And Brandon Sane is wrapped up. Ryan Van Bergen in the middle of that defensive front had help from Kevin Leach. You know, Sean, we've been fortunate to have seen both these teams over the course of the year. And we saw them at the beginning of the year, and then we watched them follow through it. Ohio State definitely has gotten better. And where they've gotten better has been in their offensive line. And then they've gotten healthy. And in particular, with Boom Heron. Boom Heron in the running game, and they've gotten more stability back there. Second and nine. Back to a pass from Pryor and too high over the head of DeVere Posey on the near sideline. Well, it is a defense that has not improved for Michigan. They made a coordinator change last year. Scott Schaefer out. Ironically, he went to Syracuse, where Greg Robinson was fired as the head coach. Robinson came here. But it's been a defense as those numbers to test that has been awful ranked in the 80s in all of those departments nationally. But Greg Robinson said they had a great week of practice. He thinks they're going to play a terrific game today. Chance for an early stop on third down and nine up top Brandon Graham prior all day to throw takes the check down and a good open field tackle Stevie Brown the senior playing in his final home game. Took down Brandon Sane and Brown hopes it's not the final game of his career. A win would extend it into a bowl game for these Michigan seniors. Well he's able to chalk that ball down because the coverage down the field took away any deep throw. And then Sane just checked underneath and they did a good job of holding the discipline of the scheme and then dropping down and making the play. John Toma in the punt for Ohio State high and short and it takes a good Buckeye bounce all the way down to the seven yard line and now Michigan comes on offense that's been the strength of the team this year as Matt mentioned a moment ago they're number one in the Big Ten in scoring. 31 points per game. Tate Forcier, the true freshman, has passed for 1,800, rushed for 230. We'll also see his fellow freshman, Denard Robinson, at quarterback. Roy Roundtree came in motion. It's a straight ahead handoff to Michael Shaw. And he's buried immediately by Cameron Hayward who started out strong against their last really big game in terms of, of uh, the Big Ten. Well actually last week was a very big game against Iowa. The Penn State game he just dominated that whole game. And if you're going to stop this Ohio State defense you better handle him first. Michigan without its two leading rushers Brandon Miner the shoulder injury will not play Carlos Brown unlikely to play with tendonitis in his knees. So here's their third running back Michael Shaw the sophomore he danced back near the 10 yard line and a late flag thrown as there are two players tangled up along the near side was Greg Matthews and Chimdi Chekwa wide receiver and cornerback respectively they had a wrestling match along the 10 yard line near side of the field. 
You know, for this Michigan offense, like we've said earlier, we we've had an opportunity to watch them as the seasons progress. Offensively, what's really come clear is the quarterback position. After the play, there are two fouls. Personal foul, number five on the defense. Personal foul, number 13 on the offense. Those penalties offset. Third down. And what's happened with the quarterback spot is his body of work suggests that you take a good look at this little scuffle, a little bit of a motion going on, which you like to see in a big game. You like yes. to see in every game. Mm -hmm. But Tate Forcier, as you take a look at the cut, Tate Forcier is the player who is best outside the pocket, not inside the pocket. When he's inside, he rushes himself. Like he's you're in the pocket right here. he's in trouble. He dropped the ball in the end zone. Free at the goal line. And it looks like Cameron Hayward has it for an Ohio State touchdown. Well, Sean, you said it. He was right there in the pocket. And that's where he has struggled the most. I don't know if he doesn't see things well, but I, the one thing I do know is he loses his patience inside. And he starts to pull his eyes down like you see right there. And he's not very good with ball security. We've seen that all year. He tends to carry it in that one hand like a loaf of bread. And like prior, he's been turnover prone from time to time. So not the kind of start Rich Rodriguez and the Wolverines envision. Devin Barclay, last week's hero, is overtime field goal, beat Iowa. He adds the extra point, and they're glum already in the maize and blue, not the scarlet and gray. Touchdown, Ohio State, scored by the defense, Cameron Hayward. First career touchdown for Cameron Hayward, set up by the nice 42-yard punt. 13 of that on the roll for John Toma. And Ohio State leads 7 to nothing. The Wolverines trying to draw inspiration from their 1969 team. There's Jim Mandich in the middle of your screen. The outstanding tight end, Dan Deardorff on the right. 40 years ago, the, in Bo Schembechler's first year, they upset Ohio State. That touched off the 10-year war. Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes head-to-head -head in some memorable battles. And it really helped get Bo Schembechler's career off and running. Nice return off and running is Daryl Stoneham. And he's all the way out to the 38 yard line tackled by Travis Howard. Here's Holly. Well, guys, over the last few weeks, there's been some hard coaching back and forth with Rich Rodriguez and his young quarterback, Tate Forcier. But that time, after that fumble, he came to the sideline. Rich Rodriguez was totally calm in a very quiet, intense voice. He told him, we have to take care of the football. He's trying to keep his young quarterback's confidence up, and that's why he's got him out here again on this series, despite that turnover. A very different, calm, cool, collected Rich Rodriguez that time. There's Michael Shaw, and he's stacked up by Ross Holman, their leading tackler, the outstanding junior linebacker out of Coldwater, Ohio. Well, if you're going to block anybody on this uh, Ohio State defense, it has to, obviously has to start up front. But this front seven, one of the best front sevens I've seen in college football. They're physical. They can run. They're very disciplined. Quick throw by Corsier Martel Webb who's the starting tight end for the first time in his career today. He's taken over for Kevin Coger who's a little banged up Webb just his fourth catch of the year. He's a junior from Pontiac Michigan. They're back quickly to the line third and three. This is where they need to be. They need to be in third and manageable. This is when they operate the best in their offense. They got it off quickly but Corsier's throw is incomplete in the direction of Greg Matthews. Going all the way back to the beginning of the season, this is what Tate Forcier was able to do well. When he's on the move, he's, he's generally better. He sees the field better, more of a half the field guy. Uh, he was Aaron, obviously, in his pass there. Fulton Mesco will punt it to Ray Small. Small had a big 81 yard punt return last year against Michigan to set up a touchdown. Signals a fair catch and makes it at the 22. 33 yard punt from the man Jim Tressel calls the best punter in the country, Zoltan Mesko. 
83rd season of football in the big house. Today's game, the aerial coverage provided by MetLife. MetLife has the protection you need for the most important ifs in your life. Visit MetLife.com today. Buckeyes have won five in a row in this rivalry. Trying to make it six. They lead seven to nothing on a defensive score. Out throwing his prior to Devere Posey and he's tripped up. Nice play by Donovan Warren. The outstanding corner junior from Long Beach California. Yeah Sean what they're doing on Michigan right now they're, they're bringing eight men in front and right in the box and they're daring Ohio State to throw the football. So what that does it puts pressure on an area of the Michigan defense where they have not been very good. And that's in the secondary. And so they're going to have a lot of they're going to be good today. They're going to have to have a lot of good one on one tackles outside. Now Ohio State comes out in the four wide look kind of trying to spread the field. Three of those wide receivers to the left of Terrell Pryor. 6'6", 235 pound quarterback through a sinker ball to the near side in the general direction of Ray Small. Here's Matt Weiner in New York. They have been impressive. We'll see if they wind up in a BCS Bowl. We know Ohio State will. They'll be in the Rose Bowl for the first time since after the 96 season. Pryor wrapped up and he's so big and strong he almost got away but could not. Mike Martin former state wrestling champion finally wrestled him to the ground and lost his helmet in the process. And that's Mike Martin number 68 is one of the guys that Michigan's really high on and with good reason. He's a tough kid. He has great initial quickness. You saw right there just using his wrestling moves excellent hips uses good hands and oh yeah he's fired up. That kid's a that's a great kid. Yep. One of my favorite players in this team. Well, you like the wrestlers and he's done it all year with a bad shoulder. Junior Hemingway trying to return the punt and nowhere to go. Good punt by John Toma. And outstanding coverage led by Brian Roll, their starting middle linebacker down there covering punts. Tomorrow night on ABC in the comeback story of the year, Whitney Houston performs live. And with five nominations, will Michael Jackson be the night's biggest winner? Plus, don't miss performances by the Black Eyed Peas, Carrie Underwood, Lady Gaga, one of Matt's favorites, and Rihanna, many more. It's the American Music Awards live tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central on ABC. I thought you ate black eyed peas. You didn't listen to them. <laughs> Tate Forcier. Can he get this offense moving? He's on target for a five yard gain. Junior Hemingway, sophomore out of Conway, South Carolina, has been limited in recent weeks by a back injury. Forcier comes out. Denard Robinson, fellow freshman. Primarily a running quarterback is in. He can fly. 4 3 in the 40. Freshman from Deerfield Beach, Florida. And he takes off running as a nice hole and a first down. Seven yards for the man they call Shoelace because he leaves his shoelaces untied on the field and in the conduct of his everyday life. Never ties his shoes. Denard Robinson just, just looking to run to daylight. What a nice block right there by Omame, number 65. On Kurt Coleman, the safety number four coming down, just showed him what big people do to little people when they want to. <laughs> Robinson's relatively a little guy, takes off running again. That was a hard earned five yards, and that's what they want. They want to be good on third down, and they're going to do that. They need to be good on first down. Calvin McGee, the offensive coordinator, told us first down is the key, and that's a quality play. They got five on first down. Coleman comes up limping just a little bit but this Michigan offense when they're humming they win first down and that's at least plus four. Robinson's thrown it only 27 times all year and four of them have been intercepted. A one yard gain there and he got popped by Jermail Hines. Ross Holman goes off the field now for Jim Tressel. And Forcier comes in as they spread this defense out again with a five wide receiver look, which puts a lot of pressure on your five interior linemen. Swing pass. Roy Roundtree. First down all the way to the Ohio State 22. 
21 yard gain Austin Spittler team captain made the tackle for the Buckeye yeah, just a nice little bubble screen and it's not going to do anything unless Martel Webb gets that block right in the slot right there what happens when you spread everybody out it makes you have to defend the whole field and it puts you in a position to have to tackle in the open space RCA handed it off to Michael Shaw. He lost the football and it goes out of bounds. He got popped by Devon Torrance. Not the first contact of the day for Shaw. We saw a little taste of the emotions that run high in this rivalry from Shaw before the game today in the tunnel when he was on his way onto the field. He's from Trotwood, Ohio. He collided with a member of the Buckeyes in the tunnel and they woofed at each other. To forget Wolfen and hold on to the football. Forcia has a man on target. Roundtree near another first down at the 12-yard line. You know, Sean. One of the other things that we've seen where they've really improved is Roy Roundtree. Roy Roundtree had his opportunity, and this is the way it is in all levels. And all you kids out there at any level of football, when you get your opportunity, you make the most of it. Roy Roundtree has been nothing short of phenomenal in the last three weeks. He's clearly gotten into a rhythm with Forcier. It was a first down, and now Vincent Smith, the true freshman. Another little guy at 5'6", 168 out of Pahokee, Florida. He got banged down near the eight. This is a type of offense that the Wolverines have to run and run effectively. They've won on first down, and then they've rolled Forcier a couple times and made the throws on the run. And when they're good, that's what they do well. Spread them out again, four wides and a tight end look. Little pressure. Forcier, a quick throw, incomplete. Well defended by Kurt Coleman, one of the best safeties in the country, a three-year starter. You said it right. This is a, this is an outstanding safety in Kurt Coleman, number four. And what he's going to do, he's going to get on that hip, and then nice break of the ball right there. See, top shoulder down. You can still touch him. You don't have. You can't. You can't uh, change the direction of him or anything. A really good but a jolt. But with the inside hand, you come through and knock it down. It's, that's well played. Good football. And play of the drive and a big one. Third down and five. Ohio State leads seven to nothing, but Michigan is on the move. Quick throw, and Matthews had to go to the ground to catch it. No gain on the play. And here comes the field goal unit on for Michigan. So a good drive for the Wolverines stalls inside the 10. So if you're a Michigan fan, there's two things that have happened so far that is good. This drive, where they've been pretty efficient, and then defensively, two times they've held the Ohio State Buckeyes to uh, having to punt. So really, the only points so far have been the miscue with the fumble. Olas Novich had a good year, 10 out of 13, but you saw lately a little iffy, and that one's wide right. From 24 yards, the fifth year senior, first year starting field goal kicker, has the Michigan fans shaking their heads again. 7 0 Ohio State in the first quarter in Ann Arbor. Jason Olas Novich missed a short field goal. Michigan still scoreless. The only time a Michigan team that was below 500 beat an Ohio State team with a winning record was in 1951. First year for Woody Hayes as head coach of the Buckeyes. And Heron turned the corner and made his way to the 24 yard line where Mike Martin took him to the ground. There's that Mike Martin again active inside. Not a real big guy. I mean, he started the season at about 290. Now he's probably playing in the 80s, mid 80s. That's what happens. Uh, but very active and good sideline to sideline and a tough guy at the point of attack. After a gain of four, it's Heron again. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage, stumbled forward for a yard. Jonas Mouton, the tackle, will be third and five. And they try to take advantage of the size advantage of Ohio State's offensive line because the Michigan defense, Sean, you and I were talking about it all day yesterday. They're just small. It's not a real big group. 
And so to offset that, they like to use a lot of movement. And sometimes it's feast or famine. Sometimes they'll hit in the backfield. And sometimes they'll get you for a big one. Four wide receivers for Pryor. Again throws it in the flat for Heron. And the one on one tackle is made by Stevie Brown a yard short of that first down. Sean you called it exactly right just like we said you're going to spread this field you put a lot of corner on your people in space a lot of pressure rather on your people in space and you have to make one on one tackles. Stevie Brown does just that and shows up uh, for a fourth down. John Toma. Excellent punt. That's a bomb. Drives Junior Hemingway back to the 17 yard line. And excellent coverage by the Buckeyes. That was a long punt, and they still got down there. Devon Torrance in on the stop. Well, the emotions always run high. We talked about Michael Schatz. Grant Schwartz, who's not in his uniform yet, walking down the tunnel. They bang shoulders and <laughs> Start whooping at each other. Neither one to give ground. Looked like Shaw on his way down the tunnel went after the two guys were right along the wall first. Yeah. Didn't get a piece of them. <laughs> Made a Schwartz be with you. <laughs> Shaw on the sideline. We'll see a lot of him today with Brandon Miner and Carlos Brown nursing injuries. Here's Vincent Smith, Vincent Smith freshman who had a good game last week in their loss at Wisconsin. Was their leader in total offense at 82 yards, 54 of them receiving. Pretty good receiver out of the backfield at 5'6. Yeah, not a real big guy, good quicks, and he can redirect real well inside. That's what you're watching him do right now. Four CA out of the gun after a gain of six, and he is forced to dump it off incomplete with pressure from Brian Roll. Here's Matt Weiner in New York. All right, John, here's a Taco Bell update. North Carolina and Boston College. BC needs a win today and a Clemson loss to stay in the division race in the ACC. But Dave Shinsky is picked off by Kendrick Burney, who had three picks last week. 21-3 there in Iowa. Looking for a BCS at large berth and leading Minnesota 3-0. Iowa played very well in defeat last week at Ohio State in a memorable game. Forcier's in trouble. Turns the corner, lofts it up for Matthews. It's caught. And apparently Forcier was still behind the line of scrimmage. First down, Michigan. Ball marked out at the 47-yard line. 23-yard game. Now this is that awareness we were talking about with Forcier. Just has a great feel, especially on the edge. Watch how he takes it all the way to the side. And then Jimmy Chekwa, number five right there, had to make a decision. Do you come up underneath or stay in the back? Michael Shaw banged down at the 50 yard line by Ross Holman. Kirk Coleman also went on the stop. Holman was looking forward to one of the great traditions of this rivalry week on the Ohio State campus when on Thursday night the students go jump in Mirror Lake in the middle of that beautiful campus in Columbus. Like fun. Oh yeah, they get it down to about 40 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and that pass is batted down by Holman. I did read an article last year the College of Earth Sciences at Ohio State did a study and on that Thursday night when the students go jump in near a lake the temperature of the lake goes up by about three degrees and the ammonia content goes way up so draw your own conclusions. Yeah that's a good point go jump in a lake yes. takes on a whole new the meaning. jump out of the lake. <laughs> Third down and seven. Forcier nowhere to throw it now fires first down 40 yard line. Lateral Savoy check that Daryl Stoneham. Sophomore from Stafford Texas with his 13th catch of the year good for 10 yards and a first down. Well he can only do that because he's well protected. Watch how he looks back to the inside here first. It's not there takes the pump and then Stoneham's on the outside and because he's protected he's able to step and throw. Michigan moved the ball well in its last possession got bogged down inside the 10 and then Holdis Novich missed a 24 yard field goal for CA threw it up for grabs 
And he's lucky that one didn't get picked off. He was looking for Roy Roundtree. Well, Coleman did a good job of undercutting it. Had he put just a little bit more air on it, Roy Roundtree had a big play happen. Borsier sees him, does not get enough luft on it. See, Coleman just out of his reach. But he's, if he doesn't do that, it's a big play. Quick throw to Roundtree, and he is swarmed under immediately. Jamail Hines, junior out of Cleveland, drops the play for a loss back to the 42. And that'll be the final play of the first quarter. Michigan had a decided edge in yardage, but the defense scored for Ohio State. We're back in Ann Arbor, Ohio State and Michigan. Many of you might have noticed the Buckeyes wearing a decal on their helmets with the initials SS in memory of Stephanie Spielman. The wife of former Ohio State All-American College Football Hall of Famer Chris Spielman. Stephanie lost her courageous battle to breast cancer at the age of 42 on Thursday night. Forcier throws and it's incomplete broken up by Anderson Russell. You know, so Chris we've talked many times over the years Matt about what a tough guy Chris is but he readily admitted Stephanie the toughest member of that family I spoke to Chris last week he described his wife of 20 years as a warrior more than 12 years she battled the cancer came back many many times and Chris honored earlier this year for his induction to the Hall of Fame. The Spielman's I know really appreciated the warm words from Jim Trestle that he took time to seek Stephanie out. And our heart aches for Chris and their four beautiful children. Madison, no one may see an Audrey. Excellent punt. And down by Stevie Brown. Well, she was a wonderful woman, Chris. Uh, Matt, as you know, and we're so proud of Chris for how he stood by her side, took time away from his own career. When he was in the prime of his NFL career to be with his wife and children, and he's a hero for us too. They know if Chris Chris played the game, it was supposed the way it was supposed to be played, and more importantly, he lived his life the way it's supposed to be lived. And and the thing you really saw was just how much he loved his wife, and that uh, that comes through loud and clear. Yeah, much loved in Columbus Spielman's have raised more than six million dollars for breast cancer research and may she rest in peace our thoughts and prayers with the Spielman's today and always we love them very much. First and ten for Ohio State from their own six prior had trouble with the snap. Dan Heron got a yard. Kevin Leach in the middle of that defense. We haven't heard much from OB Isaiah. I haven't even recalled seeing him on the field. He's their second leading tackler. We were not told that he was injured, but Leach has been in there in the linebacking core for Michigan, ordinarily a backup and special teams player. Well, that defensive line is playing well. You talk about the way Chris Spielman played the game and how it was supposed to be played. This Michigan team is playing it the way it's supposed to be played right now. Just good, tough defense. Huge hole for Dan Heron. And he's all the way out to the 25 yard line. Tackled by Troy Wolfolk, who's had to move because of injuries back to safety this week from his corner position. He started at both this year. 19 yard run. Well, did you see the patience by Boom Heron, which was really, that's that's really what run defense is all about. You see the backer right in the middle was it was Leach 52. He was just waiting to see what Heron was going to do. And he got he made his move first and Heron cut off of him and of course we jinxed him and they get the big play. Play action pass. Pryor throws wide open receiver Devere Posey and another first down for Ohio State. Out to the 38 yard line 13 on the completion to the sophomore from Cincinnati. Well if you're going to be productive throwing the football in today's game you better stay away from Brandon Graham number 55 you see as they they tried to double him come down at the tight end and they roll from him and because he rolls he's able to find the receiver down the field and it's a first down. First and ten. 
Pryor throws on the run. And it's Posey a short gain out of bounds near the 44. Well, last week against Iowa was 51 runs for Ohio State and only 17 passes, but they've been much more balanced early on here today. Well, what Jim Tressel's trying to do right now is to get all those people out of the box. They're going to start to throw. But the interesting thing with Ohio State is they don't push the ball down the field very much. They play the game in about a 15-yard box. And Devere Posey is the one player who can push it down the field. Second and four, they go to the I formation. Aaron trying to follow Zach Boren, freshman from Pickerington, Ohio. He's the brother of Justin Boren, the young man who transferred from Michigan to Ohio State. Justin Boren's actually, in the opinion of some, been a trader twice because he grew up near Ohio State but decided to go to Michigan. Then he left Michigan, transferred back to Ohio State. Their dad, Mike, played at Michigan. So that was a factor in all of those decisions. Yeah, and he has a real good way of looking at it, like Trader Schmader, I came to play. And he wants to play good, tough, physical football. And in his opinion, he wanted to do it for Ohio State. More power to him. The Michigan folks downplayed that. And we spoke with them. Greg Robinson said he hadn't heard one word on the practice field about Justin Boren this week. Terrell Pryor. Stop short of the first down. That Michigan defense, heavily criticized for a couple of years now, rises up and forces a fourth down from near midfield. Sean, that is great team defense across the board. And it started with Craig Rowe, the outside backer, who held the edge. And because he held the edge, Brown could come down from the outside unabated. Nobody was there. Just comes down and boom, makes a tackle and sets up another fourth down. Ohio State 0 for 4 on third down now. John Toma in the kick. Artavius Odoms runs up to make a fair catch. A little bump crowd on the flag. They're not going to get it. As he had a mini collision with Brian Roll. All season long, we've been counting down college football's top 30 moments of the last 30 years. When we come back, moment number 11. Buffalo Wild Wings presents the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. 11. In 1991, Michigan receiver and kick returner Desmond Howard won the Maxwell Award, Walter Camp Award, and was named first team All-American. But it was this 93-yard punt return and pose versus Ohio State that locked up the Heisman. Goodbye. Follow the top 30 countdown all season long. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Certainly one of the great images from this rivalry and one of the top 30 plays of the last 30 years. Of course, our colleague Desmond went on to be the MVP of Super Bowl 31. The Packers win over the New England Patriots. Gary Moeller, a Michigan coach, looking on. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC's College Football later this afternoon. They'll reveal moment number 10. Tate Forcier, a lot of time, and finally finds his man. It's Greg Matthews for a first down out to the 33-yard line. Michigan has outgained Ohio State to this point. But the Wolverines trail 7 to nothing. Forcier lost a fumble that was recovered in the end zone by Cameron Hayward. And outperformed them in their offensive defensive line. This is a lot of time to be able to throw the football. And he tracked him for a long time before he got rid of that ball. Vincent Smith to the 37 picked up four. Ross Holman made the tackle. Michigan's moved the ball well today Sean they and they've thrown the ball. They've run the ball pretty well. They've get, been able to get themselves into that third and short which is what they like. Second and six now and movement along the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a false start against Michigan. False start. Number 52 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Steven Schilling, the left guard, junior from Bellevue, Washington. And this is an the offensive line that has really missed David Molk, their starting center. Yeah, they have. But this is the position they didn't want to be in. Corsier throws on the run. And it is a catch and a first down at the 44. Roy Roundtree with a 12 yard pickup. Yeah and he's that's it. That's an excellent catch and it's all hands. You watch at the end of the play just watch his hands and then make sure the feet are in bounds. It sits down and great awareness knowing where the sticks are. 
And it continues to be Forcier's favorite target. Four catches today for Roundtree. Michael Shaw dropped by Brian Roll. Big loss. Back inside the 40. Loss for about five. And they ran right into a blitz. You're going to see Roll come off the edge. Goes right, right where it's going. And unaccounted for. Just a matter of numbers. See the fullback right there, Grady. 24 was his job to track him. He was anticipating he was going to be outside. Roll jumped inside and wins the battle. Officially a four-yard loss. Forcier has a man caught. Roundtree to the Ohio State 39 first down Kurt Coleman the tackle 21 yards the gain for Michigan it's just a deep dig you know watch him in the center right there right the slot it just comes across to the inside gets to the middle of the field that is a route that takes time and in order to have that time your offensive line again has to be able to protect and somebody just kicked one of their shoes off <laughs> and they they look they just took it and threw it in the back it's right over here that's a shoe from the offensive line and it's back at the 47. Forcia to Matthews. Another first down to the 26 yard line. Anderson Russell made the tackle. Now Forcia grabs the shoe. It's for Steven Schilling. Schilling's like, I don't need a shoe. Just get out of here. Just let me play. I don't need all my equipment. Shoeless Joe Jackson. We have shoeless Steven Schilling. <laughs> and they're going to make him come out whether he wants to or not. And now a timeout. Called by Michigan. They want Schilling in there with this drive underway. And he's been the starter at left guard all year long. That must not have smelled very good. Everybody stayed away from it. <laughs> Forcier just threw it behind him. Nine minutes to go, first half. Seven nothing, Buckeyes. Both teams pet rallies held this week. Now Tate Forcier and the Michigan offense trying to fire up the fans in the stands here at the big house. They're down seven to nothing but on the move again first and ten. Stephen Schilling got a shoe back in. He is on the field. Forcier carries to the Ohio State 24 for a gain of three. I hope Jimmy Johnson's crew can change the flat tire faster than Michigan got. Schilling's tire fixed. Yeah, he's going to have to watch number 52 right there. He can't quite get his shoe on, so he kicks it back. And then you see Michael Shaw takes it like, I want a shoe here, and throws that behind him. And Tate Forcier sees it, tells the referee. Forcier, too high. Had Roundtree, but airmailed him. And it hit Kurt Coleman up around the shoulder pads. Yeah, it came off high because Doug Worthington was right in his face. And they finally got some pressure on top of him out of their down four. And watch again. Remember we said earlier, he's best when he's on the move. Watch 84 come from the inside out. Just that pressure from the inside forces this ball to go high. Coleman should have had, should have had a pick. Or CA 12 out of 19 passing for 130 yards. Dumps it off short, and Carlos Brown is dumped. Senior running back with limited playing time lately because of bad knees. Even if he had healthy knees, he wasn't going to run very far because John Simon and Devon Torrance were right there. Yeah, Devon Torrance held the outside, and big John Simon, great hustle from the inside out. And that's the key when they start running those type screens, the bubble screens, tunnel screens, all those screens on the outside. You have to get great inside out pursuit. And Simon did that. Jason Olis Nabich, a 46 yard try, and that one is good. Missed a chip shot from 24, and then he knocked that one home from 46. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Michigan on the board. It's Ohio State seven and Michigan three. Back at the big house and time for the Pacific Life game summary. It's early to make the case that Michigan has outplayed Ohio State to this point, despite, despite the fact the Buckeyes lead seven to three. Better than two to one, the advantage in yardage for Michigan. But the big play of the game, the 4CA fumble that was recovered by Ohio State in the end zone for a touchdown. Those two, the, the uh, rushing yards, going 22 yards. 
and then 0 for 4 on third down just speaks to how well the Michigan defense has been playing. Well, Robinson thought they'd give their best effort today. Love the way they practiced. Rich Rodriguez loved that kick from Brian Wright. Ray Small downed it. Here's Matt Weiner in New York. Almost certainly on their way to their 21st straight win, the longest winning streak in FBS football. Well, he's had another good year, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. He had the concussion in the middle of the whole thing, but he just keeps chugging along, as does Florida. There's Ohio State. Brandon Sane somehow managed to get across the line and much more. How about that effort? All the way out to the 34 yard line. Finally, Troy Wolfolk got him down with some help. 14 yards for the junior. Now watch the power, but then more importantly, I want you to watch how the offensive lineman could come, come right back to him. Watch there. See? That's number 70 right there, Brian Browning. He gives you just a little bit of extra juice and keeps those legs moving. There's a lot of juice in that body. 312 pounder, Brian Browning. Junior out of Cleveland. Prior flush. Now he takes off. And he lowered his shoulder and bounced into Stevie Brown. They both kind of bounced back from the contact. And Pryor went out short of the first down marker by about a half a yard. Well, this is where he's dangerous. You know, we've talked about this a lot of times. Now, he doesn't see anything, and then he just sees the green to the left. Watch the hit at the end. One goes one way, one goes the other, but Pryor goes out of bounds, doesn't get the first. Sane stopped at the line of scrimmage. Brandon Graham made the tackle. He was one of those seniors who talked quite passionately yesterday, Matt, about the importance of winning this game. He said if we could beat Ohio State, everything else would be erased. We might have had a bad year, but if we beat Ohio State, that other stuff goes away. Yeah, he knows it, and this whole team knows it. And Brandon Graham reminded everybody. And the best way for him to remind him is to do it with his play. Another third down for Ohio State. Trying to convert for the first time, and they do. As Sane, powerfully built at 6'1, 217 pounds. And he can run at that size. He's a former 100 meter state champion in high school. He got the first down out to the 46. And at his power, you saw that on a previous run, but just watch him how he lowers his pads, gets down, and then just follow that big offensive line. You can see Bryant Browning again there, number 70, the guard, and then Shugart's out there. You got Cordell, the tackle, Justin Bourne inside, and Brewster, the center. Prior the fake, and lots of running room. There's no question about the talent. Sometimes the Ohio State folks wish it would be unleashed a bit more often. 25-yard run for Pryor and a first down. Well, it's, a, it's an option. And when you have option, you have option football defensively, which is assignments. And you saw Brandon Graham. He had the mesh point. And so his job is to take away the run first, which they do. And then the next man has to come be able to take the, the quarterback. But he just ran past everyone. Prior the preseason Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. Many thought he'd be a Heisman Trophy candidate. As a sophomore, handed it off, and that's going to be a touchdown for Brandon Sane. 29 yards. It's the classic misdirection. And you get that Michigan defense flowing one way because of what Terrell Pryor creates. You have to get on your horse because you, he can't get a head start on you. And so as you start that way, he hands it back to Sane, cuts back across the flow, and with his speed, he was going to be in. By far the best drive of the game for Ohio State. 80 yards, six plays, all of them on the ground, and Sane the touchdown. His fourth of the year. Second week in a row, he's had a pretty long touchdown run. He had that 49-yarder last week against Iowa. This one covered 29. And Ohio State leads Michigan 14 to 3. In the days of fire. 
Prior to that last drive Ohio State had 22 yards rushing for the game 80 yards on the touchdown drive. We welcome you back to college football presented by K Jewelers from the big house they ran insane touchdown has made it 14 to 3. He had two long runs on the drive the 29 yard touchdown and a 14 yarder. Terrell Pryor a nine yard run and a 25 yard run. And Devin Barkley kicks off. Here's Daryl Stoneham. And he turned to kick off for a touchdown against Notre Dame. Not that time. He got splattered at the 20 yard line. Etienne Sabino, backup linebacker, drilled Stoneham. You could say he stoned him at the 20 yard line. Well, he, did, he did stone him. Sabino just came down, put a face on a face. Oh, you got to love that. That's good football. And they had Watch to help Stoneham. Sabino off. He was a little bit wobbly after his head went high into Stoneham. You know, it was just the abrupt stop. That was the thing that got him. That was a great hit. We're going to take a look at the sophomore from North Miami Beach, Florida, Sabino on the sideline. Tate Forcier on the field with Denard Robinson also on the field. Forcier is going deep, and it is incomplete. Intercepted. And intercepted. They wanted a call. Kurt Coleman came away with the ball. He was looking for Denard Robinson. And the Ohio State fans celebrating the interception by Coleman, his fourth of the year. Well, we said neither of these teams really pushed the ball, and now they take Denard Robinson, who has some juice, and there's some jostling going on down there with number five, Jim DeCheckwa. But Coleman tracks the ball well. And because Chequa was able to tip it right at the end, Coleman comes down with the pick. The ball, of course, was underthrown. Had it been pushed over the top a little more, he had a shot at it. And in this spread offense, they have a lot of small receivers. That time it was Robinson, the quarterback, sent deep down the field. He's just six feet. Pryor going for the home run after the turnover, and it's too long. Over the head of Devere Posey, the JT Floyd trying to run stride for stride. John, let's go back to that touchdown just to see exactly what speed does from the quarterback position, and it's going to influence the defense. Once they start running this way, I want you to watch how the defense starts flowing. You see the backer come, the safety will stay up top the corner, rather, and they'll start attacking this. All he needs with this is for him to jump inside. And then you can see Ballard 86 and Cordell is able to secure the corner. And then Cordell comes off with another block, and it's Sane for six. That's today's inside view brought to you by City. Second and 10. Pryor incomplete. Intended for Duran Carter, the freshman. Donovan Warren was jumping up and down. He thought he had a pick six on the near sideline. He had a shot at it. He was just, he had turned his head around. He had a chance. Holly, what you got? Well, guys, after Ohio State just had that nice drive with Terrell Pryor, long runs, and Brandon Sane run for a touchdown, Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, was beyond himself. He took the headset off, was yelling at the guys, among other things, said, guys, you are so soft right now. Brandon Graham got his defense together and said, guys, we cannot fall down now. This is the point where we have to stay together. And Coach Robinson knows it. There's a point in every game where it can go one way or the other. You can't let this get away from you if you're the Michigan Wolverines. Pryor trying to get away, throws it away. Big step right there, Sean. That's great awareness for Terrell Pryor. Instead of running out of bounds or even taking a sack, he just retreats a little bit, knows where he's at on the field, and pops it out of bounds and lives for another day. You can see him, he's he's making strides, he's getting better. I think people are frustrated with him, or not with him, just, just watching the whole picture. They say, you know, we're too conservative, let the guy throw the ball down the field. But Coach Tressel, what he wants to do is he just wants to win. That's his bottom line. And what's the best way to win for this team? That's how he calls the game. Martavius Odoms fielded the punt, and the punt coverage has been outstanding for Ohio State all day. Thomas kicked the ball well, and Devon Torrance was again down, leading the coverage. 46-yard punt, no return. Well, earlier, Holly Rowe told you that Justin Bourne is the second player to play for both Ohio State and Michigan. Today's Aflac trivia question, who was the first? 
Holly ordinarily would have provided that information report, but she <laughs> wanted to save the answer for today's Aflac trivia question. Holly's been all over those things. She's Holly got a really good football mind. She knows a lot of football. Rich Rodriguez does too. He said yesterday when we were talking about the difficulties here in Michigan, I didn't take a stupid pill when I got to Ann Arbor. Here's Vincent Smith carrying for a first down. Rich Rodriguez came here from West Virginia where he had a great seven year run. Won 60 games in seven years. The last three years went 32 and five and led them to two BCS Bowl games in three years in all four Big East titles. Made him one of the most highly regarded coaches in the country. And what he's trying to do here, Sean, works. I mean, you can see, you can see parts of it here, and that's the key. He doesn't have all the pieces. He came in late, didn't have the big recruiting year his first year because he was kind of he got stuck in the, in the recruiting process. He has really one good recruiting class of that that this coaching staff has put together, and he needs more. But some of the pieces are here. Forcier There's one shovels it ahead. Doug Worthington made the tackle. It was Kevin Grady, the fullback, who might have caught that shovel pass. Not necessarily the way it was drawn up, but a little improvisation. Yeah, you see Gibson, number 90, right there, jumps back underneath Grady. But again, just great awareness by the freshman. He's able to flick it down. Down to three and a half minutes to go, first half. 14 3, Ohio State. Third down for Forcier. Dancing. Looks like they grabbed a face mask. No flags. The crowd wants it. His head got spun around. That's for certain. Doug Worthington, the tackle, short of the first down. Watch as he jumps up inside. You're going to see Worthington grabs the shoulder, doesn't get the face yeah. mask. The crowd thought the hand slipped off the shoulder pad to the face mask, but it really did not appear to based on that replay and a good no flag from these officials. Zoltan Mesko including a brilliant career. Michigan's all time leader in punts punt yardage. Very likely to be an NFL punter native of Romania came here when he was 11 years old. Ray Small made the fair catch at the 19. 42 yard punt time to answer the athletic trivia question and I know you knew the answer to this as well who was the first player to play for both Ohio State and Michigan. Well the answer is my old coach at Penn State J.T. White John Tecumseh Troublemaker White as he used to like to say <laughs> was a great player in the 40s and a fantastic coach and old J.T. was a center for the Michigan Wolverines and for the Ohio State Buckeyes was a prominent player on both teams. I believe he captained both teams. And Heron finds a crease and is near first down. He had played on a national championship squad 1942 at Ohio State and then went on to World War II after his military service. He finishes education here at Michigan. He was the starting center on their 1947 championship team later as you said uh, served as an assistant at Penn State under both Rip Engel and Joe Paterno and for a long time and JT to everybody JT JT called everybody a knucklehead <laughs> if he called you knucklehead that was a good thing a term of endearment prior fake the handoff and he is a tough man to tackle at 6'6 235 and with that 4 4 ish speed Donovan Warren finally able to bounce him out of bounds and Ohio State on the move here with just more than two minutes to go. Well he's a big man and he's smooth and he never really appears to be going as fast as he actually is. But the other part you forget about him is is his size. He'll, he'll run through tackles. He will run right through arm tackles. You come to tackle Terrell Pryor you better bring your big boy pads. He was recruited heavily by Rich Rodriguez. Just as Rich arrived here as the head coach at Michigan under pressure and he throws it away again. Question is That's was he out of the tackle box and there is one flag thrown by the referee. Yeah, that, that's a good call by the official. He never really got past and the tackle box really is from tight end to tight end. Intentional grounding number two on the offense. The pass did not get beyond the line of scrimmage. 
The ball is placed at the spot of the foul with a loss of down. Second down. So there are two parts to that rule, Sean. The first one is you have to get past the tackle back box. You have to get outside, which is from an area from there to there. On, and then the second part is you have to throw the ball at or beyond the line of scrimmage. In this case, it didn't go beyond the line of scrimmage, and it was questionable whether he even got outside the tackle box. That's huge because the penalty is from the spot of the foul, and that's way back at the 20-yard line. Heron, the ball carrier. Question is now, will Michigan use a timeout? And it will. Leaving them with one. You think back, they had to use one, Matt, when they wanted to get Schilling back on the field after he lost a shoe. Rich Rodriguez would like to have that timeout still in his pocket. Coming up, stay tuned for the Capital One Halftime Report with John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. Scores and highlights from today's college football action. And including this action, the 106th meeting, and the great rivalry between Ohio State and Michigan. Ohio State trying to defeat its arch rival for the sixth year in a row, leading 14 to 3. Terrell Pryor alertly went down before the boundary to keep the clock running. And Michigan will use its last timeout. Pryor went down just across the 30 it appeared. It'll be fourth and long and Michigan will get the ball back. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC Saturday Night Football. The 11th ranked Oregon Ducks head to the desert to face the Arizona Wildcats in a matchup between two teams both in the hunt for the Pac-10 title and a berth against Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Some of you will see Kansas taking on number three Texas. That's tonight Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines 8 Eastern on ABC. Both Oregon and Arizona as they head into that matchup control their own destiny with an eye toward the Pac-10 title. If they win out, of course, only one of them can win out because they play each other tonight. Oregon State still alive. Stanford needs a lot of scenarios to play out, but they have a shot for Jim Harbaugh. Not a good punt. And a few poor ones by Toma. Caught on the run by Martavius Odoms. The coverage continues to be excellent for Ohio State. And Odoms was taken down at the 46 yard line. Here's Holly Rowe. Guys, during that last offensive break, Tate Forsey, the Michigan quarterback, was here on the sideline throwing with the athletic trainer Paul Schmidt standing right next to him. He's grimacing each time he throws. Now, remember, he's had a sprained AC joint for much of the season. It's a similar injury that Sam Bradford had, but it wasn't as severe. But it looks like he got hit on one of the last plays. We'll see how he keeps going here, but he is in obvious pain. All right, Holly, thank you. From the 46, Forcier under duress again shovels it off to Kevin Grady. They don't have any timeouts. That's just a two-yard gain that doesn't really do them any good. Ross Holman made the tackle, and the clock's going to run under a minute to go in the first half. They would have been better off with an incomplete pass to stop the clock. Neither one of these teams really stretches the field with their passing game. Forcier through the hands of the tight end Martel Webb. John, if you think back just a few games ago when we had the Michigan Penn State game, they struggled also with the time management right before the half. This one obviously sets up a third down with just 50 under 50 seconds left to go here. A loss would give Michigan consecutive seasons of seven losses or more for the first time in school history. They lost nine last year. They're five and six right now. Forcier got rid of the football. The officials looking at each other. Thaddeus Gibson was in hot pursuit. And they're still trying to sort it out on the far sideline. You watch Thaddeus Gibson, the number 90, as he's working on Ortman. Ortman takes a shot from behind, and then Gibson just runs him down. Forcier is able to throw it out of bounds beyond the line of scrimmage and obviously outside the tackle box. But on that play, his receivers have to help him. Sean, they didn't. They didn't come back to him. 
They ran their routes and they stayed depth with depth and didn't track him back. I don't think the officials have decided whether it was an incomplete pass or whether 4CA was down before the ball left his hand. They've been spending a lot of time chatting. Please reset the game clock to 37 seconds. Fourth down. It was 49 before it started and they would have had to stop the clock for an incomplete pass. So where those other seconds got to I have no idea. I didn't see anybody signal incomplete pass. They did mark it at the previous line of scrimmage which would lead you to believe it was ruled an incomplete pass. There's Zoltan Mesco again. Nobody back deep for Ohio State and the ball goes into the end zone. You can see the clock and it continues to run as he goes down. He clearly was up. Yep. And the ball gets thrown. How oh, does he, you know, the ball, oh, he pumps it one time. Now that was the discussion whether or not his knee hit before. But you see, none of them are signaling incomplete pass. Yeah. They're all just looking at each other. So that's why I think the clock operator let it run because yeah. he didn't see an incomplete pass have. signal either. Of course, there was 42 seconds there, but they went to 36. So I, <laughs> let's not even talk about that math. I don't think it matters in the final analysis. Pryor took a knee. And Ohio State will take an 11 point lead to the dressing room as they try to beat Michigan for the sixth year in a row. Last chance for those Michigan seniors. So post a victory against their rival. Here's Holly. Coach Rodriguez, what do you think when Tate Forsey starts this game out but fumbles in the end zone? Well, that's just a mistake we can't have. You know, we're beating ourselves and they're too good to give them any help. You are moving the ball well, though. What has to change just to keep it getting into the end zone a little well, further? we got to get some rhythm offensively. We had a few drives going and then some third down execution problems. But, you know, we're right in this. We get the ball first, the second half. We just got to stick some drives in there. Thanks, Coach. From a yardage standpoint, just about dead even. 168 for Ohio State, 166 for Michigan. But it's 14 to 3 on the scoreboard. Here's John Saunders and Jesse Palmer in our Times Square studio, the Capital One halftime report. At the half, it's Ohio State leading Michigan 14 to 3. Despite the fact that statistically the game almost exactly a dead heat, the big difference, and that's been the case through a lot of the year for these two teams. The turnovers, Michigan had two of them. Ohio State's now played 10 quarters without a turnover. Yeah, and the one turnover for the touchdown when he started off the game. But I think the story right now for the Michigan Wolverines has been their defense. Jesse Palmer talked about it at halftime. They've kept them in this football game, and really, they've played a pretty controlled game. Um, just at the end of the half, you started to see Terrell Pryor exercise his running muscles and able to make some big plays. But uh, prior to that, it's just been all uh, good defense by Michigan. And Rich Rodriguez in the interview with Holly Rowe pointed to this first possession of the second half. His team is going to get the football first. Devin Barkley kicked it. Daryl Stoneham returns it. And not very far. Special teams play outstanding today for Ohio State. Russell wasn't always happy with that aspect of the game last week against Iowa. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Mentioned the key mistakes that it was Michigan making. Tate Forcier early in the game lost the football near the goal line. Cameron Hayward recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. 7 0. Then Olas Novich after a 10 play drive missed a short field goal. Brandon Sane, a 29 yard run. That was on an 80 yard scoring drive. Really the only sustained offense of the day for Ohio State. Michigan's moved it from time to time, hasn't been able to punch it into the end zone. They come out running with Vincent Smith who went to the 23 for a gain of seven. So what Michigan did well they need to do right now and that's get back to them winning the first down which they did there and then controlling the line of scrimmage. In the flat Vincent Smith driven back and that's a loss of about three Brian Roll playing on a sore left calf made the tackle. Here's Holly. Well, I caught up with Ohio State Jim Dressel at the half. He said this game went exactly like he thought it would. Every single play is going to matter. And he said that they are really doing a good job on defense despite Michigan's ability to move the ball. He said everybody has been giving Michigan big yards on offense. They've been able to move the ball. We just have to be a little bit more stout. 
And Trestle embraces all the traditions of this rivalry. Forcier throws, and it is incomplete. Looking for Roy Roundtree. <laughs> he said to some people around the country, we talked with Coach Trestle, he said this rivalry might have lost a little something right now. It's been one side in an Ohio State's favor. Really, since Trestle became the coach, Michigan's way down. He said, but it's not lagging anything if you're in the game. He said, my first game as an assistant coach at Ohio State, I was useless till the end of the first quarter because I was so in awe of being on the field for the Michigan Ohio State game. It may not have the edge nationally, but when you're in this thing, hey, it's the whole thing. And that's what traditions are all about and rivalries are all about. Mesco's punt is muffed. And Small got it back at the 40 yard line. Anxious moment for the Buckeyes. Here's a look at our Cheese It Real Fan Spotlight. We referred to it earlier, one of the traditions of this rivalry week. The students, the Ohio State campus taking a plunge into the cold and murky waters of Mirror Lake. The tradition will continue on Thursday night. The origins of that jump are uncertain, but we trace the roots back to the 1920s. And I can hear my 91 year old father's words in the back of my mind. Youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> Red say Wrestled down by Troy Woolfolk at the 46 yard line. I don't know if the big nut was there to jump in the lake. The other <laughs> That's night. awesome. Hey, I think sorry. it goes back to the 1920s when uh, freshman men were required to wear hats to distinguish themselves from upperclassmen. And if you were caught without a hat, you were thrown into the lake. Big nut is awesome, though. I mean, at one point, he's walking out the door, and he looks in the mirror, and he goes, all right, honey, I look great. <laughs> <laughs> Pryor throws through the hands of Dane Sonsenbacher, who grew up around both sides of this rivalry. He's from Toledo, Ohio, just across the Michigan border. It's actually closer to Ann Arbor than it is to Columbus. Kind of a quiet day for Sansenbacher, who's had a big year for, for Ohio State Buckeyes. He's one of those guys who, who's an excellent route runner, gets in and out of his breaks real well, sits down in zones real well. He's one of those dependable guys who, who runs actually pretty good, too. Got one good catch speed. for Sansenbacher today for 11 yards. Four wide receivers now for Terrell Pryor. He's seven out of 13 passing, and that one's too hot to handle. And intercepted on the ricochet, Jonas Mouton. First turnover for Ohio State. We mentioned just moments ago, they played two turnover-free games, the last two against Iowa and Penn State, and a turnover-free half today until this. Well, you put the Sean Jinx on him right there. This goes through the hands. Donovan Warren was, he was defending Devere Posey, and the tip comes off, and Mouton comes up with it. Second interception of the season for the junior from Los Angeles. Excellent field position. Michigan from the Ohio State 49. Vincent Smith nowhere tried to turn the corner and could not. If Brian Roll has a sore left calf, they might want to make his other calf sore too because he's in on just about every play. He is, and he's always active in this defense. And one of the reasons why he has he's got really good eyes. And he keys and diagnoses very well. The other part of it, he knows when to be patient and when not. You see at the end of that play how he choked it down a little bit, didn't want to get over, to high, over too high on top of the runner, it came from the inside out. That's, that's good football. Forcier with Denard Robinson also on the field, given plenty of time. Now he has all kinds of running room, and he dives down. They're going to give him. The first down, and that might be a generous spot to the 38-yard line. You mentioned Denard Robinson in the game, and Denard Robinson is the one player they think can bust the game open with his speed. They lined him up wide to the top. You can see him on the top of your screen. It's man-to-man -man out there, and he was looking for him, but it was well covered. And he also noticed that it was man-to-man, -man, which means all your backers are off, so he took advantage of that and got the first. Vincent Smith. Ahead for three to the 35 yard line where Ross Pullman made the tackle. Forcier is coming off now as Robinson runs on. He'll play quarterback. Almost always a run in this instance. 
And it is just designed for him to take off, and Ohio State was ready for it. Jamal Hines, the safety, up there around the line, as you might expect, with Robinson taking the snap. Well, and you call it, Sean, because we're sitting up here going, hey, it's almost always a run. They already know that. So that's why you'll see number seven sitting right down there, Jamal Hines. Roundtree is the one who probably should have blocked the safety. He was looking downfield, but you got to get a hat on a hat. You can't let the safety come clean. It wasn't a blitz. Was just part of the scheme. Third down and seven. A very long field goal from here, about 52 yards. The long for Ellis Novich is 51. There's no wind right now. Slant and a beauty. First down, Greg Matthews with a perfectly thrown ball from Tate Forcier. It goes to the 23. First down, Michigan, 12 yards. Yeah, this is just good vision and, and good awareness because you're going to see Roundtree lined up to the top side, and there's nobody on the inside. I'm sorry, Matthews made that catch. He had the game-winning touchdown in the final seconds against Notre Dame, their biggest win of the year. Near side, it's Roy Roundtree pulled down by Jamail Hines at the 18. So here comes Michigan on the move again. Can they finish it with a touchdown? Yeah, they need the points off this turnover. But the guy who's doing his best to stop him is that Jamail Hines. Every time they've tried that, that little bubble screen, Hines has been all over. He's blown it up a few times. The tenth interception of the year thrown by Pryor, and now Michigan trying to take advantage. Forcier, one-handed attempt to catch it by Matthews. Looked like Forcier thought he was going to continue slanting toward the middle of the field, and Matthews wasn't really moving at full speed. Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator, he brings the blitz, and it's Hines this time. And he came from the outside, and he came, nobody picking him up. The ball had to come off. Had a chance with Matthews, but quarterback's got to make a better throw. We've heard a lot of defensive or offensive coaches talk about how physical that secondary is for Ohio State, and Devon Torres gave the receiver Matthews a bump. Did you see him jump in there, Sean? They look like they're kicking to too deep, which would show you a zone. Forcier looked to the sideline for some help, got some additional signals. Forcier has running room again and has a receiver wide open. Vincent Smith, great move. A couple times when Forcier scrambles, he put himself in trouble. That time, he found the big play. It was set up by his feet, and a great move, like you said, by Vincent. Second receiving touchdown of the year for the true freshman. His first was last week against Wisconsin. Extra point up and good from Olus Novich. And Michigan is right back in the game. Big underdog on their home field, but they have basically played their arch rivals toe to toe today. The interception by Jonas Bouton sets up the touchdown reception by Vincent Smith. The pickoff, just the 16th takeaway of the season for the Michigan defense. By contrast, Ohio State's defense has 30 takeaways with their two today. Brian Wright will kick off the crowd fully engaged enjoying a competitive game and a beautiful November afternoon with the sun out now the temperature in the 50s. Ray Small started from just inside his five trying to go all the way across the field. And there's a flag thrown far away from where Small was tackled by Troy Woolfolk. Hard to run away from Woolfolk. He's also a track athlete. Here at Michigan, the son of the former All-American running back Butch Wolfolk. Troy says he wants to break some of his dad's track records before he leaves here. Well, he's certainly capable of it. He can really scoot. During the return, holding number 17 on the returning team. Ten-yard penalty. First down, Ohio State. Let's go back to that touchdown shot. This is going to be a five under two deep. You have the two safeties over the top. You split the field, and they have one, two halves. Then you have five under. One, two, three, four, and five. And they have the underneath coverage. The corner down here, his job is to read that and get his eyes back inside. He carries it down, releases number one, comes to two. He carries him too far, and Forcier rolls to his left and does a great job of scanning the field and finds Vincent Smith on the right side for six. 
That mistake free formula working in recent weeks for Ohio State. With a turnover, now a penalty on the kickoff results in poor field position. They started from the 11. But Brandon Sane got him a quick five. As Ohio State works from deep in its own end of the field, just under 10 minutes left, a long way to go here in the third quarter. As we've seen the last few weeks with this Ohio State football team, this is the time of the game when this offensive line starts to take over. The second half, they've really controlled the line of scrimmage and run the football, and that's what showed up for their victories the last few weeks. Trouble with the snap for Pryor. But he can improvise with the best of them. And he runs to the 30. You know, that's reminiscent of the kickoff return for a touchdown last week by Darrell Johnson Kulianos of Iowa. A lot of the coverage men for Ohio State thought he was helped by the fact that he dropped the kickoff. Well, and that, that, that big, uh, you feel, or you heard, that was the defense of Michigan. Like, we had him, and we let him go. And he's one of those guys that he does that to you. He is just such a good runner with the ball in his hands. Man, he, he's dangerous. A lot of times you see a bobble, and you're not quite as disciplined as you might be as you run after the man with the ball. Brandon Sane after the 13-yard gain by Pryor. That's good. That's power about right three. There. Yeah, he took he took Kevin Leach. Kevin Leach just hung hung on for good for dear life because he met him right in the hole. Good read by Leach, and then Sane just powered right through him, ran over, and picked up probably another two yards. Leach has been playing pretty well. You mentioned about Obiase not being in there. They've been a little disappointed with him, but this kid here's come in and he's he's been in on a bunch of a bunch of plays. Obiase was their leading tackler last year, number two this year. There's a big hole in that defense, and Sane carries out to midfield. First down. Wolfolk and Warren combine on the tackle. Yeah, let's just take a good look at this offensive line for Ohio State. We just got done talking about get a hat on a hat. Oh, this is really well done right here. Very well done. You see Browning right there. And oh, the center Webster good, did a nice job of just creating the seam and Sane run right through it. 17 yards for Sane. He's rushed for 80 on 10 carries. And now it's Heron's turn. Another first down. Ohio State. Now ahead by just four, right back to the bread and butter, pounding the run game. Another 13 yards and a first down. This is what I like about Jim Tressel. If one thing works, keep doing it until they stop it. Same clock. You're going to see the same thing right here. Nicely done. And then Colt on the backside, another nice seal by the center, Brewster. And then another seam. And boom, Heron this time for the big pickup. First and 10, Ohio State on the move. Leading 14 to 10. Now midway through the third quarter. Same, or rather Heron tackled at the line of scrimmage by J.P. Fitzgerald, another backup linebacker. You, know, you talked about Jim Tressel sticking with it. A couple of years ago, they were playing at Illinois, Ohio State. I called Dick McPherson, the legendary former Syracuse coach, who's going to the College Football Hall of Fame with Chris Spielman in early December. Jim Tressel was a young assistant at Syracuse. He was in his mid-20s. He said, what do you remember, Coach Mack, about Jim Tressel? And I'll tell you the rest of it in a moment. It's a story that 25 or 30 years later still, still holds, holds to what you were talking about. Pryor bounces outside. Coach Max said, I remember Jim's young assistant. We go to Illinois to play our first game. It's a new staff. Jim's calling the plays. We have Joe Morris. First play from scrimmage. Jim calls Joe Morris off tackle. It goes for 10 yards. Another play. Joe Morris off tackle. goes for 10 yards. Another play. Joe Morris about seven yards. So Coach Mack put the heads on and said, Jimmy, do we have any other plays? And Coach Tressel said, yes, Coach, we do. And as soon as they stop this one, we'll go to the next that's, one. That's perfect. That is perfect because that's what I love in a play call. I love it hey, because as a lineman, when you start getting the same thing and you know you're starting to own the guy in front of you, just keep on giving it to me. There's plenty of running room on the outside. Dan Heron around the corner and inside the five. Marked out at the two. That time it was Jim Cordo, the left tackle, and he just, nice job, and, and he secured the edge. Watch Cordo right there. See, he able, he's able to make the block and secure that edge, and then here he comes just running right down the left side. This is well done, actually, by this whole left side. Hat on a hat. See it. 
And a little, little bit of hand holding in there, but not too bad. <laughs> they let you hold a bit more in a rivalry game, perhaps. 22 yard run. Ohio State right back to what it does best. Not that time for Heron. It's Brandon Graham determined as a senior to play in a bowl game. He shows up every week. Brandon Graham uh, has, has certainly has made a case to be an All-American. And the way he's made his case is with big play after big play. He can really burst about 270 pounds, plays with great leverage, and you see his type of player in the National Football League a lot. Prior, they were ready that for that, and he's dropped. Play. Graham again, back at the 11-yard line. Just like we said, Sean, big play after big play. So first it's a tackle for loss in the end zone, in, in, in the backfield, and then, hey, to be able to track him right here, watch the patience, and then the burst right there. That is outstanding. Brandon started the day leading the nation with 21 tackles for a loss. Two more today. And this would be big for the Michigan defense under siege all season if they could force a field goal try. Third and goal. Here comes a blitz. Little screen. Great call. Flag down. Touchdown if it stands. Dan Heron. That looks like you could be roughing the passer, and that is, Sean, a great call. You called it. Anticipated the blitz. They came with the blitz. They just snuck the back outside. Personal foul. Roughing the passer on the defense. The touchdown is good. The penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. Yeah, watch. They're going to bring the pressure. And then watch Pryor. Excellent patience. He's just going to wait just enough time to allow the back to sneak through. And there it is. And then it's six. You saw the defender. He put his hand on on Heron to kind of slow him down. And I thought, oh, we're going to get to him. Got off of him. And then it resulted in a touchdown. And now movement. That was the first pass. On a 12 play 89 yard drive. First pass. Well, we had the sack, so it was would have been a second. Maybe a it was a start. first pass, but maybe second or ten. on the offense. Five yard penalty. Try for point. Marcus Hall, the freshman tackle. Well, back to what Jim Trestle said to Coach McPherson. Exactly. 26 years or so ago, more than that, almost 30 years ago now, back in the early 80s. They stopped a couple of runs, so then he went to the next play. Uh, exactly. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. What they're doing is winning football games. They went away. A win today would give them 10 wins or more for the fifth year in a row. Barclays extra point makes it 21 10. Ohio State leading Michigan. 446 to go in the third quarter. They take it some of the traditions on the Michigan campus leading up to the big game, the PTA class and the car bash. That's John Beeline, the Michigan basketball coach, <laughs> taking a few hacks during the car bash on Tuesday. After the penalty for the roughing the passer on the touchdown play, Barclays kick off into the end zone. And Daryl Stoneham bring it out to the 20. Jimmy Johnson's win last week in Phoenix has given him a 108 point lead. And as long as Jimmy starts the race, only one man can catch him in the last race of the chase. It's Mark Martin. Can he do it or will J.J. hung on to claim his unprecedented fourth straight championship? The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes tomorrow with the Ford 400 in Homestead, Miami, with coverage beginning at 2.30 on ABC. NASCAR Countdown gets the coverage started. I'm still pulling for Mark Martin. I've been saying it for six weeks. Something good's going to happen to him. Vincent Smith with nothing good happening to him. Brian Roll rolls him down. Back at the 17. Well, he's loss of three. Jimmy Johnson, by the way, needs to finish 25th or better to win the cup. But Martin's done it before. Nine times over the years, he's gained 108 points on Jimmy Johnson in a race. That's nine out of 265. Not great odds. Roy Roundtree tackled by Thaddeus Gibson at the 22. It'll be third and eight for Michigan. You know, Sean, when you look at this uh, Ohio State defense, and you and I, like I said, we've had the pleasure of calling not four games this year. The same names keep coming up all the time. 
Thaddeus Gibson's one of those guys. Cameron Hayward, Brian Roll, Holman, one of those guys. Spittler, one of those guys. Kirk Coleman. Those are playmakers. They do it week in and week out. Forcia needs to reach the 30, needs a block, and he didn't get it. Outstanding tackle by Holman. That's the name we call most often week to week. He's emerged as their leading tackler, and he makes plays all over the field. He was the last guy with a shot to stop Forcier short of the first down, and he did. Forcier looks down the field, doesn't see anything, and then watch Holman track him from inside out. And Vincent Smith, the guy who just scored the touchdown, knew that he had to get that block and could, just could not get there. 11 tackles today for Holman. Rolton Mesco with another bomb. Had a career filled with them here in Michigan. Small flag down on the return. Small's down at the 27. Might be a holding call on the near sideline against Brian Roll. Fifty three yard bomb from Mesco seven yard return. Sultan Mesco by the way during the return. Big. Illegal block in the back. Number thirty six on the receiving team. Ten yard penalty. First down. Big Ohio State fan, Bolton. When he's growing up in Twinsburg, Ohio, he watched that national championship game against Miami with an Ohio State jersey on. Now he Not plays for Michigan. Sorry. Beautiful day at the Big House. Nickname to Michigan Stadium given by the legendary football announcer Keith Jackson. We're honored to work from the booth, which Keith called this game for many years. And Heron around the corner. And we're also privileged to be calling the last game ever in this booth. I mean, just about as soon as this game is over, right. they're going to rip this booth down as part of the new uh, press boxes. And you can see the structure on the other side of the field. Those luxury boxes will be occupied next year. And they build a bunch of boxes and a new press box over here. A lot of great stadiums in this country, but the big house is right at the top of the list. Doesn't get much better than this. What a great venue. And we've done the upgrades while retaining that old style feel. And on that subject, Ohio State rolled out the throwback uniforms today. With more on that, here's Holly. Well, these uniforms are called modern classics because they're actually based on the 1954 uniforms, but they are space age technology. What Nike told me, guys, is the whole point now is not outfitting football players. They are outfitting a track team, basically. They are looking for the lightest weight uniforms and speed. So this is the new base layer. They actually put the pad in this. This is dual density foam. These are the pants that Adrian Peterson is going to wear on Sunday. More in a moment. First it's Heron weaving his way through some traffic. Craig Rowe made the tackle at the 36. Holly. So like Dan Heron right now he'll have these reinforced thigh plates and this foam wraps around his leg for better protection. Then these new re-engineered pants they are so lightweight they're 40 percent lighter than the old Ohio State uniform. And this part right here was the heaviest part on the uniform the D-ring. So Nike made it instead out of titanium. It's 60 percent faster or excuse me lighter. And guys that uh, they said we're looking for speed. Even the cleats weigh just 9.7 ounces right now. Mm. They're looking pretty fast don't you think. After the game, we're going to send them in a rocket to the moon. That space <laughs> age technology. Dan Heron, the ball carrier. I thought it was a throwback to 1954. There's not much of that that looked like 1954. You take all that great technology and get it all faster. They can move you and stick it on some 320 pound linemen. And you go, here, don't you feel much better? They go, yeah, pass the pizza. <laughs> What well, is a big difference? Those pads built into the undergarment that's good rather stuff. than sliding the pads yeah. into your pants. That, that is that's good stuff. And they're they've been improving equipment for decades, the least of which has been with the improvement in helmets. Under a minute to go, third quarter. Ohio State scored to take an 11 point lead, then the defense followed that with a three and out. Now it's Pryor stumbling, and he still gets the first down. Out to the 41. Craig Rowe credited with the tackle. That 1954 team, by the way, being honored because they won the national championship, led by Hopalong Cassidy. Went to the Rose Bowl, beat USC 20 to 7. Hopalong at 92 yards rushing that day. And flags are down as Heron goes up the middle. You know, we asked Jim Tress the other day, are you going to get involved with the throwbacks? He said, no, I'm with my government issue that I wear all the time. And he said, what do you think about it? He said, I think the uniforms are sharp, but I'm one of those guys who just likes to go play the game. I'm not into all the extra stuff. 
I think he kind of tolerated what he thought was an unnecessary illegal shift. Very minor distraction. The offense was not set for one second prior to the snap. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Well, they're so lightweight in those uniforms, they were moving too quickly. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, Jim Tressel, you take a good look at all those pads and braces and things that are slapped on guys. But Jim Tressel, you know, he's he's come under a little bit of uh, a little scrutiny there, you know, being conservative offense and opening a thing up. But look, I think that guy is one of the best coaches in college football and runs a great program. Not a good one, a great program. And he understands it's all about winning. Now, how you win, that's a whole nother story. He just knows he needs to put the W's on the board. One quarter away from the outright Big Ten championship. 220 yards rushing for the Buckeyes today. They lead 21-10. McDonough with Matt Millen and Holly Rowe on a gorgeous November afternoon at the Big House in Ann Arbor, 106th meeting all time between Ohio State and Michigan. The Buckeyes lead 21-10 as we go to the fourth quarter. On first and 15, Van Heron carried for about three. We take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, and Ohio State really established the ground game, Matt, there in the third quarter. Yeah, remember at the start of the third quarter, we said this is where the Ohio State offensive line the last few weeks has been taking over, and you can see it. 220 yards at the end of the third. That was 113 yards just in the third quarter alone. And where have they been getting it? Off that right side. You see Brewster, Browning, and Shugarts have been playing very well. Pryor rolls out, and it's caught by Devere Posey. He's at the 43-yard line. And you look at the well-timed runs today, and it's been all three of them, Sane, Heron, and Pryor involved in the act. Sane's rush for Rady, Heron for 94. He also scored on a screen pass. And Pryor's just 49 yards rushing, but he has run for five first downs. Yeah, he's been timely all game long, and he's made good decisions. He had the one tip ball for a pick, but he's 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 done exactly what they need him to do. And dangerous in this situation again. He's going to air it out deep and has a receiver. It's a bit too long for Posey. With JT Floyd running with him, and Floyd might have cramped up, pulled something as he is limping and grabbing at the back of his right leg. Well, we said earlier in the game they have one guy who can really push the field, and this is what pushing the field means. You can watch Devere Posey just runs right by him. That's JT Floyd, number 12. Yeah, he went right past him, and that's the guy who has the deep speed to break a defense. John Toma on the kick it. Very high up into the air, and Martavius Odom signaled fair catch and made it at the 17 yard line. Time running out on Michigan. They need a win to be bowl eligible this season. A lot on the line today. Rich Rodriguez trying to avoid being the first Michigan coach to lose his first two games to Ohio State. And this Michigan program trying to avoid back to back losing seasons for the first time since 1962 and 63. They had their worst record in school history last year, three and nine in year one under Rodriguez. Vincent Smith saw Forcier fake it to him, dump it off. Roy Roundtree, lots of running room and great speed. And with the angle, he was caught by Anderson Russell, but Roundtree goes all the way to the Buckeye 40. And the whole thing is set up by the timing of Forcier as he pushes that corner. As a defender, you have to make a decision. And then what happens is Jamel Hines jumped up to take the quarterback, and he dumped it off, and Roundtree did the rest. 43-yard gain, eight catches, 116 yards now. For Roundtree, Bernard Robinson runs just shy of the 35-yard line. 
The attendance here today 110,922 largest crowd of the season here at the big house. You know Sean this game is far from over. You put six on the board right here you get to 21 17 you play good defense you're this game there's a lot of game to be played. That streak of 100,000 plus dates back to 1975. Boy, Robinson, that just hasn't worked. I mean, everybody in the house knows when he comes in, basically, that's going to be the play. So at one point, you're going to have to use that against the defense, and he's going to have to throw the football. We saw it earlier in the season resulted in, a, in an interception, but it was a pretty well thrown ball went in and out of the tight end's hand. Now, this was early in the season. Can't remember which game it was, but he's certainly capable of doing that. Third down, 35 yard line, nearing 12 minutes to go. Ohio State leads by 11. Forcier throws it up for grabs, and it is intercepted. And now ruled incomplete. Kirk Coleman thought he had it. He held it up for the official, but ruled out of bounds. Well, and I think it's because, or I believe it's because he finally he got control of it when he was out of bounds. Mm -hmm. He went up inbounds and came down. Let's see, right there. Good job by Matthews to force that thing. Well, I don't know. Ooh, that looks like a pick. Yeah, it sure did. That looks like a pick. Watch Matthews try to turn it to a defender, get his hand in there, and try to get the ball out. That looks like a pick. They better run this play. Hurry no, up. No, they didn't get it off fast enough. Replay boot, Jim Augustine. The previous play is under further review. Sean, on the previous play, they rolled to a cover two, which means Coleman has that half. And the ball had too much air under it, which allowed him to be able to make that, this play right here. That's a lot of ground to cover for Coleman. And really, that's a good catch. That's a pick. It sure looked like it, I thought, live. And it does after the replays as well. Matthews tried to do the transition game. He tried to do it well, he tried to be a defender. But Coleman just makes a good play. Kurt Coleman, the senior. One game left to play in the Rose Bowl after today. Been a terrific player for three years. He's one of the 20 quarter finalists nationally for the Lot Trophy, which goes to the Defensive Impact Player of the Year. He's also been terrific in their community, involved in a lot of community service, and a team captain, hoping for his second interception of the day and fifth of the year. More than 200 career tackles. 10 tackles last year in the win over Michigan in Columbus. He is an excellent safety. His one little area that he has to work on are his angles when he comes down from high as a two two deep safety and he drops down sometimes his, his angles get messed up a little bit but he can run he's a fierce tackler he's very competitive very bright runs the secondary he's what you want in a player he's one of those buckeyes who really embraces the traditions we talked to earlier he was looking forward to Going down the lake, he wouldn't talk about whether or not he was going to jump into Mirror Lake Thursday night himself, but he was at least going to go down and watch others do it. This is a big call. Could be a huge step toward the outright Big Ten championship for Ohio State if this call is overturned and ruled an interception. After further review, the defender had firm possession of the ball with a foot down inbounds. We have an interception. Ohio State's ball, first down at the six yard line. I want to show you how he got there. They were showing a cover three first, and then they rolled to a cover two. Now, this would look like it would be a traditional one, two, three. But what they do is they roll it up. He comes over. He goes to half and half. And Coleman has a lot of real estate, and he anticipates it very well. You can see how he rolls to it and then tracks it, and it makes a great play. Second interception of the day for Coleman, second for the team, 21st of the year for Jim Tressel's Buckeyes. That leads the nation. One more than Clemson. And in turnover margin for the year, they're now plus 14. That's really the difference between a good team, Ohio State, and a bad team, Michigan. Ohio State's plus 14, Michigan is minus 10 in turnover margin for the year.
So, Same driven back by Jonas Mouton. Yeah, so if you're the Michigan team right now, you can treat this like a punt because you have good field position. And you have to win the field position battle right here on this series. They can't let them out. You get the ball back in decent field position, and then they got to stick it in the end zone. You'd have to guess, based on the history, Ohio State will be very conservative here. And the main job for Michigan is don't let Terrell Pryor get loose on one of these runs. Exactly. And, and hold the line up front. Sane. That's exactly the kind of play call you would expect. And Jonas Mouton wrapped him up after being out near the 10. On Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, don't miss television's hottest new hit. It's ABC's V. Visitors will reveal a shocking plan in the final episode of 2009, so don't miss the second of the series. That's been called riveting, action-packed, and instantly addictive. It's ABC's V, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Now they're spreading the field a little bit, and Sean, this is where Terrell Pryor's feet come into play. Yep, you'd think that he would keep it and run, and he does. And he spins very near the first down. Looks like he's going to be short at the 15 by a little less than a yard. Stevie Brown made a big tackle. See that hand right there? Once that hand goes up, that's the spot. And then they just track it on in. It's well officiated. We learned that a few weeks ago, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. In the Big 12. <laughs> the timing was a little bit off, though, in that example. Rich Rodriguez in dire need of a big win. There are rumors that he could be dismissed when this game is over. He said yesterday when we asked him about that, he would be shocked based on the expressions of support he's had from the president and athletic director here. John Thomas Punt, fair catch made by Odoms. He said, I have a six-year contract. This is just year two. And two years hardly seems like enough to judge anybody in this profession. Aerial coverage brought to you by MetLife. MetLife has the protection you need for the most important ifs in your life. Visit MetLife.com today. Forcier throws running room after the catch for Vincent Smith. First down. And he is marked out at the 37-yard line. 13 yards, first down. Brian Roll took a header over there, getting up slow, but still getting up. And here he comes. Limp it all. We've talked about him, Sean, all game long. He had a very active day today with a lot of tackles. Ian Holman's made a, made a bunch of plays. First and 10. Under 10 minutes to go. Michigan scored a touchdown here. They're probably at that time of the game they'd go for two. But first things first, they'd like to score a touchdown. Roundtree would like a block. Doesn't get it. And gets yanked down by Anderson Russell. Right at the line of scrimmage. And now a whistle for an injured player. It's Vincent Smith down in the middle of the field, the running back for Michigan. Well, there's not much of I mean, he's he's explosive and he has to make you missing him, but he's about a buck sixty-five soaking wet with a rock in his hand. <laughs> and they're already, as we said, banged up at running back. A big shame that Brandon Miner, the senior, couldn't play today. Their best running back, physical presence. What would have been his last home game. But he's had a shoulder injury. We saw Carlos Brown very briefly. He's had tendonitis in his knees. So they're down to running backs three and four. Shaw and Smith and neither of them has been a big factor today. Yeah and, and especially against this Ohio State defense you needed Brandon Miners inside running presence between the tackle. He's a, he's a physical guy and he's really hasn't been right all his whole senior year. And a lot of his career. Yeah. Michigan just has 61 yards rushing. They have passed for 226. Corsier's career high is 257 at Illinois. Let's see if Denard Robinson throws something here. There's confusion on both sidelines right now. Robinson is lined up at quarterback with four wide receivers. He is going to throw. It is caught. Greg Matthews. One of the little more on the spot. He's going to be marked just short of the first down inside the 30 at the 28. That's a nice, easy throw for a young player. You take it back outside, you save the corners off, and so you just throw it back underneath. Let him run away from the coverage of Bowman inside out. That's that's good. Good play call. Well, in the days of Bowen Woody, this would be power football. For Michigan today, it's spread and it's effective. First down, Robinson. And he's down to the 10-yard line. 
He's exciting in more ways than one if you're a Michigan fan. That ball looked like it came out was on the ground. But Denard Robinson, boy, he's got some juice, and he's fun, and he refuses to go down. But what a good job by Anderson Russell of having the awareness to try to pull that ball out. Fortunately for Michigan, it came right back to Robinson. 17-yard gain for CA now the quarterback. Michael Shaw down to the six. Ross Holman made the tackle. Eight and a half minutes to go. Michigan, even with a field goal, would make it a one-score game. They'd get within eight, but they want the touchdown that's been elusive all day. Only one today for Michigan, despite lots of sustained offense. They come up to the line quickly. Forcier the fake. Nifty move. Throws. Oh. Intercepted. Devon Torrance. Another critical error by Michigan. But well played by Devon Torrance. Go back to the first touchdown for Michigan, and it was because Forcier bought time with his feet. This time he buys a little bit more time and comes back to his left side, but watch Torrance, number 10. Eyes are still back inside, still takes a sneaks a peek where the receiver is, and then makes a nice break on the ball. Forcier turned it over four times today. He had the fumble into the end zone that led to an Ohio State touchdown when they recovered in the end zone for defensive score. And now three interceptions. He's talented, but the coach is talking about how he's still learning, and one of the things he needs to learn is as the play progresses, he needs to do a better job seeing where the coverage is when he starts to look around the field. Yeah, and you know, Sean, he, he's not alone in quarterback play. I mean, I just saw in the National Football League just a couple weeks ago when the Chicago Bears were playing the San Francisco 49ers on a Thursday night game, Cutler did the same thing. He just rushed himself, took a quick peek. And sometimes those guys, they think they can get the ball in any spot. And that's what he thought. He didn't see Devon Torrance. Devon Torrance played it well and took it back. RCA had the memorable start to his freshman season, including that big win over Notre Dame when they were rolling early. Prior to the good fake, he just runs over Jordan Kovacs, and it looks like he has the first down. But Forcier, like so many, hit a wall, both academically, we're told, and athletically. Rich yeah. Rodriguez has talked to him about both. Yeah, I had a nice little discussion about that because there's more to college football than just the football field. And, and there's a lot that goes into it. It's about really learning about how you run your life. And that's what uh, Coach Rodriguez was trying to emphasize. Third down and short. And if they got it, it wasn't by much. Ryan kept it. But Rich Rodriguez is very emotional, and Forcier is too. They've had a couple of animated exchanges that have been analyzed, particularly by the local media. There was even a rumor going around Forcier planned to transfer. He has steadfastly denied that. There is a history in the 4CA family as two brothers who have been college quarterbacks, both of whom transferred. Jason was here and transferred to Stanford. Brother Chris started out at UCLA and transferred to Furman. Heron bounced off a tackle, got a yard. Holly? Well, after that interception in the end zone, Tate Forsey ran to the sideline as he passed by Rich Rodriguez. Rodriguez got in his ear in a firm manner and just said, Tate, throw the ball where the play calls for. Then Tate came to the sideline, threw his helmet. He is sick to his stomach. The look on his face says a thousand words. And then the strength coach, Mike Barwis, got over, picked him up off the ground and said, look, we're going to need you again here. You better pull yourself together trying to get this young guy's composure back. Bad things happen to all players. It's how you react to them that matters most. Now Ohio State trying to bleed the clock and Herons dump for a loss. Brandon Graham playing valiantly in his last shot as a senior to beat Ohio State. Here's Matt Weiner with the Sports Center right now. And 17 of the last 18 games. The Horn Frog, third and 13. And prior, they were ready for that. Graham again. Yeah, Brandon Graham just waited on it. And he, he, he saw the mesh point. That's the, where they try to fake the handoff. And they just kept his eyes on prior because they've gone to third downs and they've used prior's legs a bunch. Brandon Graham's very well aware of it. See how he looked at? Look at him. He's going to try to, try to influence him with the pulling guard like it was going to be a trap. He saw it, came right back outside. 
And Ohio State content to let that clock keep ticking. It'll be under five minutes when Toma punts it. He's been busy today. Michigan defense has done a good job for a lot of the day. One of those Ohio State scores was by the defense. Good field Odom. position again, Sean. Yes, his fair catch was made at the 46. We welcome you back to our coverage of college football presented by K Jewelers. Our aerial coverage is brought to you by MetLife. MetLife has the protection you need for the most important gifts in your life. Visit MetLife.com today. Michigan Sean? running out of time. Sorry, yeah, I was just going to say, with under five minutes, it now becomes four downs. You've got to get two scores. And it's Denard Robinson taking the first snap. Forcey an interception, his last two possessions. Four turnovers in all today from Tate Forcier, and Robinson has wrestled down. Just so much less of a passing threat, though, when Robinson's in the game. John Simon expected the run and gobbled up Denard. That's a big kid that John Simon just a freshman he'll he'll fill out he's only about 270 pounds but he has good get off on the ball. Of course late in the game at Iowa and Michigan was rallying back Robinson was in the game for 4 CA and through the interception that ultimately ended the contest well, start, start number 12 on the offense five yard penalty still second down. Now, I know 4 CA's had a rough day but they have moved it through the air in spots and you're going to have to throw it you would think now. Right. And he's your best guy to throw it. I agree. That's my that's my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson gets back to the 43-yard line. I ain't gonna throw it because he's looking off. Just about a must convert situation here. Third down and perhaps a fourth down. Although they do have all three timeouts, but they're down by two scores. Yeah, you're gonna he's gonna have to go to four downs here. He's gonna he doesn't have to get the whole thing. I mean, that would be preferable. They'll probably like to speed up the tempo as well. Under 15 seconds on the play clock as they get it off. Forcia dodge the rush, has a receiver open, but throws another interception to Thaddeus Gibson. He had a receiver open behind Gibson but threw it too low and Thaddeus just raised his arms and snatched it out of the air and that's what Rich Rodriguez was just to throw it over the top of him. He had a receiver wide open and it would have been a first down but he never saw Thaddeus give to watch Gibson just drop it in the flat. He, he doesn't anticipate that he doesn't anticipate his ability to be an athlete go up and get the ball being a little bit too careful with the throw and that cost him again. Junior defensive lineman from Euclid Ohio Gibson with the fourth interception fifth turnover of the day by Michigan all from four CA and everybody in the stadium saw those holds on the corner two flags thrown Looked like Zach Boren the fullback guilty of the hold as Heron turned the corner. Yeah, Donovan Warren was the corner who was trying to hold the edge. And he did get blocked, but then he did a very good job of letting everybody in the stadium know that he was being held. Holding number 44 on the offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Wipes out a good run by Brandon Sane. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC Saturday Night Football, a big one of the Pac 10. Number 11 Oregon takes on Arizona to match up between two teams that both control their own destiny in the hunt for the Pac 10 title. Either of those teams wins out, they'll win the Pac 10, the birth of the Rose Bowl against Ohio State. That's tonight, Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern on ABC. Some will get Kansas and Texas to find the game in your area. Go to ESPN.com and search maps. That Jeremiah Masoli boy what a good year he's having out there aren't they they are that whole team's playing well but he's he's been spearheading it. As Arizona never been to the Rose Bowl trying to end that drought looked like Pryor had trouble with the snap goes down immediately and Michigan will start to burn the timeouts charge timeout Michigan please reset the game clock to 301. 301 standing between Jim Tressel, his fifth straight 10 win season, and an outright Big Ten Conference Championship. 
chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes tomorrow with the Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern on ABC with NASCAR Countdown. For more information, ESPN.com. Pryor keeps it. Turns the corner, gets a block. And they're going to mark him out short of the first down. They're going to put the ball back at the 37 yard line. And the Ohio State fans flying a banner. Coach Rodriguez, we love you. You see, you know, that a Michigan fan, I think, who just grabbed it and yanked it. And got rid of it. But Coach Rodriguez has been under some fire here. And, and his seat has been hot. And I got to tell you, this is what I know about coaching. When you have good players, you're a really good coach. And when you don't, it's tough. So now, right now, this team needs to be upgraded. And there's there's no question about that. And I think what uh, Coach Rodriguez, where he really has to help himself, is on the defensive side of the football. Because they are small in their defensive line. And he wants a he wants a kind of a faster offensive line, not the real big guys, because of the pace that they go. They like to get off the ball and all that. But he has some pieces of the puzzle already in. And certainly Denard Robinson and Tate Forcier is part of that puzzle. But he needs more players. He needs speed down the field. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have that. He needs a more he needs a power running game. He doesn't really have that. Um, he's gone. He's opted for more speed, but he needs guys who can be in space. And defensively, he needs some size up front. Well, it's interesting. I think even Rich Rodriguez soon, because it's Michigan, there's going to be a lot of talent here. But you look at the team in the last two years. Where's the talent that's going on in the NFL? I mean, they might have Bill Graham drafted certainly. The punter Mesco will be drafted off of this team. Maybe Stevie Brown. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody else. It wasn't a talent-laden class that left after last year. So he has to bear some of the responsibility of his staff. But I think he wasn't left with as much talent as Michigan typically has. And we were here. You were down the road in Detroit. We were here doing games. There were plenty of people who were grumbling about Lloyd Carr, that that had gotten stale, that it was time to make a change. And I just think two years is way too small a sample to make a change, particularly when you knew you were changing so much about your program when you brought this man in to implement his offense. I, you know, Sean, I could not agree with you more. But there's another school of thought with Coach Rodriguez. And one of them is to say if you're going to make a change with an outgoing AD then let the new AD make the pick and let them live together and make it work. And if you're going to make a change make it now don't perpetuate it. I don't agree with that. But that's the other school of thought and you know there's a lot of names floating around out there the least of which is a homegrown Michigan man who's out at Stanford who's done a phenomenal job in Jim Harbaugh. Talked to somebody close to Jim Harbaugh said he's uh, very happy where he is and wants to finish the job he has started there. Then again Michigan is his school. I think Rich Rodriguez will get another year. I'd be stunned if he didn't. He would be shocked. That's the word he used prior on fourth down. Didn't get it. And they turn it over on downs and we turn it over to Holly Rowe. Well I actually spoke with Rich Rodriguez's boss Bill Martin the athletic director here at Michigan before the game and I flat out asked him are you going to fire Rich Rodriguez. He actually started to laugh. He said Holly I can't believe you asked me that. But he said Rich Rodriguez has my full support and you can say that on television. And then he brought up the scholarship numbers. He said you know we should have 85 scholarship players. We only have 70 right now. Rich Rodriguez is a fantastic coach. I have full belief that he will get this thing turned around. And Bill Martin is retiring next year. So as you alluded Matt, it wouldn't make sense. Would Bill Martin pick the next coach and then the new AD would have to live with that choice whether he liked the choice or not. Michael Shaw driven back by Jermail Hines. The ball came out, but the forward progress clearly had long since been stopped, and we sent it back to Matt Wine. All right, John, time for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Houston quarterback Case Keenum has been just a little productive this afternoon. 382 yards passing and four touchdowns at halftime. To cast your vote, text vote to 345-345 from your mobile phone. Bernard Robin firing in the direction of Hemingway incomplete. Seems we've perhaps seen the last of 4CA today. Well, Rich Rodriguez 
does he have a uh, uh, does he have a rebuilding project to go? Yeah, is he in the middle of it? Yeah, absolutely. But I think he's a good football coach, and I see conceptually what he's trying to do out on the field, how he spreads the thing, how he's how he's trying to use speed, how he's trying to use what he has against the defense. That all works. It's just he needs to upgrade his talent a little bit. Bernard Robinson is wrapped up. Uh, the loss, John Simon. So the frustration of Rich Rodriguez got taken down. College football coverage brought to you by K Jewelers. Approaching a minute and a half to go, and on fourth down, Michigan with a last ditch effort here will have to go for it. So what we saw here today, though, was the Big Ten champion Ohio State Buckeyes flexing their defensive muscles. And certainly early, Michigan moved the ball on them, but then between the offensive line and the defensive front, they took the game over. They'll be disappointed with this result if it stands this way. Penn State, Iowa, and Wisconsin, they were all hoping for Michigan win to get perhaps a chance for a share. My goodness, there wasn't a blue shirt within 30 yards of that ball. There are flags down, however. But those teams all had a shot at sharing the Big Ten title when the day started. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. The penalty is declined. First down, Ohio State. And that will seal it. Ohio State will defeat Michigan for the sixth year in a row, their longest winning streak in this rivalry. They'll win the Big Ten title outright. And they will have won 10 games or more for the fifth year in a row. And they're going to head to the Rose Bowl. That's the fifth year in a row they'll play in a BCS Bowl game. Last time they were at the Rose Bowl after the 96 season, it was the 97 Rose Bowl. John Cooper, the coach. Fourth ranked Buckeye taking on Jake the Snake and number two Arizona State. Big Plummer scored with over a minute remaining. Looked like that might be the ball game one for the Sun Devils, but Joe Germain found David Boston 19 seconds to go. 20 to 17 the final. Germain was the player of the game. So congratulations to the Big Ten champion Ohio State Buckeyes and to Coach Tressel. And Sean, they're a better team now than when we saw them in the middle of the season. And where they've improved, the offensive line, they're healthy. They're coming off the ball very well. They've gotten healthy in their backfield. Both the running backs are playing well. Their defense has gotten better as the year has gone on. And their quarterback, Terrell Pryor, is very efficient and making good decisions. Ohio State's now won two in a row in Ann Arbor. They've won three straight now in Ann Arbor. They haven't done that since the early and mid 60s. It has become a one sided rivalry. Jim Tressel talks about how in this rivalry you have an opportunity to make a name for yourself in the lore of these programs and eight and one will get you a lot of love from Buckeye fans. That's Jim Tressel's record against Michigan. Holly. Coach Tressel, early in this game, Michigan pulled within four points, but your ability to run the football changed things. How did that affect you? I thought our offensive staff and, and the whole offense did a good job of figuring out what they were doing. They were loading up, trying to put pressure on the edges on the pass, and, and uh, Terrell did a good job reading a lot of that stuff and made some big plays, and the kids were running hard and blocking hard. Terrell's been banged up, but today he made so many plays with his feet. What did you like about that? Well, you know, he's a competitor, and whatever it is you need to do to win, he'll do it, and, and uh, he's going to keep working to get better. He's going to be a good one. Coach, what did it mean for your team to win the outright Big Ten championship and not have to share with anybody? You know what? I didn't think of that until just this second. All I thought about was it was the Ohio State-Michigan game, to be honest with you, which is the biggest thing to us. The outright championship, that's a good deal, too. All right. Thank you, thank Coach. You. All right. Jim Tressel says winning the game against Michigan is bigger than most bowl games. But they're going to take the trip to the Rose Bowl nonetheless. 21 10 the final for a complete wrap up. We'll be on ESPN News in just a few minutes. For Matt Millen, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew, Sean McDonough saying so long from Ann Arbor. Let's send you back to John Saunders and Jesse Palmer in our Times Square studio.